this is the uh, first tutorial that I'm going to be doing on the uh, new release for Procreate, Procreate 4. I will be doing perhaps a, a future tutorial on how to use the overall program. I've already done one, which is the Procreate 3 version that was released a couple of years ago now. But I'm going to release a, uh, an updated version to discuss some of the new kind of features, some of the new interface changes and things like that. But for today, I'm just going to do a basic tutorial. I'm still finding my way around the, the new kind of layout of things. So I'm not going to do anything too in-depth in terms of how to use Procreate on this video. I'm going to show you how to construct just a fairly simple landscape. If you've seen any of my tutorials before or you're subscribed, you'll know that I do this every week. So please subscribe. If you want to guarantee that you see all of the videos, then press the little uh, bell logo, the little bell button next to the subscribe button. And that way you'll be guaranteed to hear about the latest videos that I release. In terms of the way I'm going to start, I'm just going to use the airbrush. And I'm going to use soft airbrush to begin with because I just want to lay in some some basic areas first to begin with on the first layer. I just want to map in some of the sky areas. So I've got a pre-selected palette here. I want to go from sort of cold blues, um, not too vibrant like some of the other default because this is, you know, the, the new version of Procreate and it's got some default palettes in here. But you can see that these colours are quite vibrant. I want a kind of muted version of all these colours. So I've got sort of blues, grey blues, through to flesh colours and kind of salmon-like colours as well. So I'm going to do some warmth in the sky area. And to begin with, I'm just going to go for one of my sort of darker, fleshy kind of salmon colour. And I'm going to just start to fill in one of these areas. I just check my brush. I'm going to go for the, the larger soft brush because I want to fill in a larger area. So... Now the sky I'm only going to do in this sort of top section really. I'm going to probably add some much lighter colours as well as some darker colours too. But just initially I'm going to get a sense of the, the warmest colour in there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to some of my more cooler versions. So I've got, if you look at the, the colour wheel, go back to the this area here. If I was to select the this colour you can see it's slightly more in the orange near the top. And then when I go further along here, it's down to the reds, but a slightly more grayed out version of it. And I'm going to use this. In fact, I'm going to change to the medium brush for this. I'm going to turn the opacity down, size the brush down somewhat. And I'm going to just begin getting in some layers of interest into this sky area. So I'm just going to do some sort of broken textures in as well. I do want to get the sense that there's some sort of bands of texture running across the sky. The sky really is only going to be this sort of section of it, but I'm, I'm continuing it down a little bit further as well. I tend to work in quite light layers, build up the subtleties until they become strong features. But to begin with, I always just tend to do things a bit more gradually. There may be other times in which I use more textured brushes and sort of dive straight in there. I'm going to be exploring some of the, the new kind of paint brushes, sort of like the um, the water brush and the damp brush I found really quite interesting so that's something that I may well explore in a future video but for today I'm just going to keep it a bit more straightforward. So I'm going on to the even slightly cooler version so you can see it's not much difference it's just if you can see where it's identified there there it's just pushed a little bit further into the greys. Go back to my airbrush I've accidentally changed back to the medium brush so I'm going to start bringing more of that cooler colour in down at the bottom Maybe a bit more of that cool area into the sky and broken areas as well. And now I'm going to switch to a cooler or the next one, just discovering some of the features. This is a new feature, so if you hold on to it and let go, you've got the option to delete it there. That's a new feature, very interesting. Let's test that colour out see what it looks like. Yeah, it's not vastly different. I've tried to eke these colours out in sort of subtleties. I think maybe I just want a slightly bolder edge along the top here to so get a sort of bank of cloud that's going to appear really a little bit like a sort of mountain range in the distance, even though it is going to be cloud. I think sometimes when you get into the far distance, the sort of the shapes of the clouds and the mountains become merged, it becomes less possible to tell the difference between the two. So that's my first layer. I will come back to the sky and add a bit more depth to it, but I'm going to create another layer at this point. And you can see that I've gone from this sort of greyed out, almost 
pinky kind of red in the gray area and now I'm moving it squarely along to a blue. It's still quite grayed out so the difference is not vast but it's definitely in the blue gray area now and you'll see a more distinct difference on the, the actual canvas. So we're going to attempt to do the most distant mountain range now. I'm going to do each individual mountain range on a different layer and that way I can as you'll see a little later on, I can make some changes to that layer without interfering with the layer that goes either underneath it or on top of it. I'll probably go along this sort of these shapes and add a bit a few more features on them later as well. So there might be some sense of distant trees, tree line per perhaps, we'll see. I certainly intend to do some more kind of forest areas and trees in, in the foreground anyway so i might just get a suggestion of it in the far distance so that'll do for that layer you're not going to see it any further down than this now i'm going to go create another layer now if you've seen any of my other tutorials you'll start to see that there's some def definite sort of methodology to this there's a very similar techniques to certain types of landscapes there will be other times where it's less obvious than this, but I thought I'd do another quite straightforward landscape for those people that are not that confident yet and need something that is fairly straightforward. And I'm going to reduce the size of the brush. And I'm going to have it maybe just rising a little bit higher. It is nearer to, so you could expect it to be kind of bigger in scale. I'm not being too precious about the shapes here. I can always amend these forms later on. I can soften the impact of them, add slightly different forms, Okay, so I'm going to bring that colour further down as well, like so. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the white. It's not a pleasant thing to look at white on a canvas. Okay, now you can make more sense of the light and the warmth coming from the top area a little bit as well. I think I might just extend this area somewhat and maybe a little bit of a rise here as well. Okay, so another layer. This time I'm going to, see I'm already on this one, I'm going to a darker version. And this is definitely going to be a more foreground layer and I will come back to it and certainly add some textures and trees and so I'm really not concerned about a neat edge along here. So I'm just already perhaps getting a sense of some of the, the tree lining. I want to keep it a rougher texture along here. Perhaps it's rising up along here even. And again, I'm going to bring that down to this area. I'll come back to that layer, but for now I'm going to create yet another layer and this time I'm going even darker. This is going to be one of the last layers, so I'm thinking this is going to be the next to last dark layer really. So there's definitely going to be a sense of some of the, the tree forms. So I'm going to perhaps just sorry introduce some kind of spiky forms in here so I can add some kind of foliage to these. So I'm thinking obviously in the general kind of landscape where you'd have pine trees, fir trees, you're going to have some tall pointy kind of structures. So I can begin to get a sense of where they belong anyway. It can be a bit softer this because it's going to be broken up by texture. It's not going to be quite as, as obvious a, a kind of edge as the others are going to be. So it's definitely going to be a more broken kind of texture here. Like so. And I have got a darker blue on my palette and perhaps there's going to be areas where just some parts of it maybe will have this kind of introduced at the top edge of things because it is going to be like kind of misty environment. And so when I get certain features poking out at the top, you may see that the true sort of depth of, of dark colours, but lower down in that layer, I'm going to introduce more of a kind of misty feel to it. So what I'm going to do is start with a few layers back. So I'm just going to identify which layer I'm talking about. This is the first layer of mountains. So I'm going to go back to that layer. I'm going to try and identify the colour of blue that matches it. I think it was that one. And now I'm just going to work into it a little bit. I want to try and define the edges a little bit. So there's definitely going to be a suggestion of of trees, of something other than just a straight line, but we're not going to see any individual trees, just slight spikes on the horizon. A bit more of a texture, anyway. So 
So I can afford to be quite, quite loose with this because I'm not having to describe individual trees. So I'm just allowing the top of this kind of scribbled motion to create the right kind of texture in the distance, which is great. Now, a similar kind of process is gonna be required for the next layer. So if I just find the correct blue, so that was the first proper blue. Now we're moving on to the next blue and we're gonna get maybe just a slightly bigger brush, not much though. And I'm just gonna start introducing slightly more obvious sort of spikes, textures, bits where you can almost identify individual trees a bit more. But again, we're not really gonna get into seeing branches, just maybe the spikes are a bit more obvious. So a similar kind of technique with the brushes, or the, the movement rather. So just allowing like a kind of scribbled motion. Maybe some areas are not going to be quite as obvious. Maybe when you get up onto a sort of mound, sometimes you get such a, a densely packed area of trees, maybe you don't get individual spikes that you do in certain areas. I think if you make anything too uniform, it's going to look a little bit contrived. So it's nice to have a bit of variation. So for example, I'll leave this area slightly less information than this area. So this is a real lots of peaks and troughs and this one's flattening, flattening out a little bit more and flattening here as well relative to that. Okay, so the next layer is definitely going to require more information. So I'm on the third layer of blue, which is here. And this layer is going to have some quite distinct trees sticking out, relatively tall spikes. So I'm just doing the spikes first and then I can go back over them and focus on adding you know, sort of branches that come off those spikes a little bit more. So a slightly different kind of movement with the brush this time, rather than doing a, a definite squiggle like that, where I'm, I'm constantly applying the brush like I did for those areas. I'm just kind of doing it in single strokes a little bit more. So I'm lifting the, the actual Apple Pencil off the screen and doing individual dashes rather than one continuous movement. Okay, so I've got a suggestion of some of the position of where the trees are going to be. On some of them, I'm going to start fleshing them out. So some of them might not have too much in the way of branches coming off it. They might be relatively empty in terms of foliage, but certainly a lot of them are going to then start widening out, like in a kind of general triangle shape. Not that it's going to be a neat triangle, but certainly a suggestion of it widening as it gets lower down. So they might start to join together as they splinter down, like so. Like I say, there may be some that stick out and they don't have much in the way of branches and leaves on them, but the majority of them are going to become sort of more triangular as they widen. And then almost, so I'll just do one here so you've got a clear view of what I mean. So get this kind of effect where almost you get a, a softening like this and a bit of a curve. So you can see there's a big difference between the spikes that stick up the, on this area, because it's a lot further to than the spikes that stick up over here. The gaps between them as well are probably greater than they are there. They're a bit more sort of compacted together, whereas the features are a bit more spaced apart. The peaks and troughs are higher and lower. So just generally a bit, a bit more of an exaggeration of those kind of features. So now I want to come onto this layer, which is the closest to. This is where I really want to start focusing in on some finer details. So I'm definitely on this point going to have to change the brush. So I'm going to switch to a medium hard brush and I'm just going to turn the size of the brush down. It's going to be more in this sort of effect. So again, I want to create some definite trees that stick out, first of all. So I'm just doing some of the spikes. So these spikes are going to stick up further than the other spikes had. So the gap between the top of the spike and the, the general sort of canopies of the trees is perhaps greater at times. You allow more space between the spikes too than you would on the further layers. So again, it's another exaggeration of all the same features really. It's the same things, just everything slightly more exaggerated version, that's all. So if I take one of the individual tree spikes 
say this one I can start I'm going to do it in more of a kind of as layers of dots now I'm going to just sort of alternate left and right with them so I might do a cluster over here and then swing it over to the right do another cluster leave a gap perhaps swing it over this area and then alternate it bring it over here as well sometimes you're going to get gaps like this sometimes you're going to get a relatively sort of dense packed area where you don't really see so many gaps you're going to see all these different kinds of variations you just don't want to do every single tree the same you've got to vary it up a little bit so i'm going to take another one i'm going to do this one more tightly packed in terms of texture so there's not going to be as many gaps maybe just the odd bit sticking out and then i continue in that kind of technique for the various different trees in fact there might be one or two spikes that hardly have really any foliage to it at all just maybe a couple of branches a couple of bits that's sticking off it and not very much on it at all There may well be brushes that achieve this kind of effect quite efficiently, but that's not what I'm here to demonstrate really. I'd quite like to show that it's possible to do similar kind of techniques, effects, and just do them by hand and still have them relatively simple really. I think it's possible to get realistic effects and not necessarily use complicated techniques. And sometimes I think brushes actually can make life difficult. I think unless the, the brush does the work for you, you're then going to have to try and integrate the brush in a way that looks naturalistic. And, and sometimes that can be as much of a challenge as actually drawing everything by hand. I've said before in a previous video, I think it is important to learn how to do things by hand, first of all, and do all this kind of texture manually. And then perhaps if you learn some brushes to create shortcuts later on, then that can be useful. But I guess it depends on what kind of finish you want. Certainly if you're an artist who enjoys a kind of loose finish and doesn't necessarily need every detail to be visual, uh, to be visible and prefer a more impressionistic, painterly kind of feel, then you may well find the brushes really useful. But I tend to be more in the express every detail kind of variety, a bit more attempting at realism anyway. Although I do find that I'm getting a little bit looser as I get older, so I don't need to necessarily draw every single leaf on a tree, for example. Um, I'm happy with a slightly looser version, and maybe that's just confidence as you get older, maybe it's taste, I don't know. I think what I'd quite like to do is create another layer and put it in between this bottom layer. So I've got that layer and I've got that layer, but I think I'd quite like to, on this layer, a sort of middle layer almost. Just change the brush size. Now that perhaps as it gets a little bit closer to, it's not quite as clear cut. There's, there's definite layer there, definite one there, definite one there. But maybe just in this section, there's a few areas that aren't neatly lined up in, in terms of the distance. There's some sort of middle trees as well that break up that neat illusion. And if I do this full opacity, I can easily go onto that layer and turn the opacity down and then they should sort of slot into place a little bit. In fact, I'll leave it on a lower opacity. And now I can really go to town on that layer and know that it's, it's going to be a little bit further back. I'm also going to work into the layers and add a little bit of mist in there as well. And that will help further define the separation between those layers. But I just thought I wanted to introduce a bit more texture, a bit more variation of layers. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the, the front layer I was working on. So if I just take it away, you can see I've just added a bit more disruption to that clean sort of layered system. Perhaps it just makes it a tad more realistic. I'm going to go back to adding these kind of textures in here. Again, they're still pretty loose. I'm not really spending a lot of time doing individual branches or anything like that. I may do some super close to trees in which it's more of a silhouette and we're getting some real sort of dark black colours in there. And then maybe I'll concentrate on just a few branches just to show a hyper detailed version. But for these, they're still pretty loose. Okay, now that I've got those different layers sort of in place, I am actually going to start working on the kind of mist effect now. So I'm going to go back to the very distant blue layer, which is here. I'm going to go on my palette, pick my first blue colour, which wasn't quite here because that was the red version, it was here. 
So I'm going to go onto there, but I'm going to choose a slightly lighter version. Now, if I just draw on here, you should see that it's got a lighter version there. But I'm going to turn the opacity way down, and I'm going to go onto my soft airbrush again. Because these are going to be sort of mist effects, and they're really not going to have any particular form to them. They're just going to create a bit of a, a variation between the, the top of that mountain range and the bottom. So again, this layer is way behind all the other layers. So the only thing it's going to affect is that particular layer here. And I'm just creating a sense that there's a kind of mist that is lower lying, affects this bottom area of that mountain. Like so. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the next layer, which is this one. And I'm going to just turn the opacity down because I've still got a quite a light colour here. And it's going to appear lighter the more I move it down into this area. So I'm really going to turn the opacity down, in fact. I just want to subtly introduce that effect. Like so, and then I'm going to go on to the next layer, which is this one. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Perhaps just narrow the focus of this down just to the very bottom area of this one. I think as it goes further into the distance, the effect is going to be generally more diffused, whereas it gets down into the more foreground, you're going to find a bit of a sharper bank of mist. So it's definitely going to be there, but it's going to be a relatively shorter part of that particular area. Right, it's gone underneath the added texture that I did there, so just need to be a bit careful with that. I'm going to take it above that particular area, but less below it, like so. And then I'm also going to do it on this layer, the bottom of these ones that I added, and the in-between. And then you can see now it's, it's exposing some of the bits that I haven't actually worked on very much, but that's fine, that's good. And then on this top layer, I'm also going to introduce just a hint of it down here as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into the different areas. So remind myself I'm on this layer. I'm going to go back to the almost the darkest blue and now when I go back over it, in fact I need to change back to a medium brush and now I should be able to see more clearly now exactly what I'm doing because it's got a layer of mist behind it so it's going to help really determine the effects that I'm creating at this point so I can see it a lot more clearly. I'm also going to go into these trees and perhaps with the darkest blue I'm going to just start adding a sense of the, as you can see it here, a slightly darker colour for the trunk. So we can just start making out a bit more of the detail here. It's coming into focus the nearer it gets. I will work back into that in a moment. I'm going to create another layer though. And with this layer, I'm going to really start having a close to set of trees now. So I want to break up this bottom area with some trees that are really quite close to. Really will start noticing foliage. Maybe the odd branch sticking out if it's a larger branch. Clusters of leaves together. But it can't afford to be squiggles at this point. It needs to be a little bit sharper. And if these work in the foreground, then it lends weight to the forms in the distance as well. So I'm obviously unwinding the, the trunk as it gets nearer the floor as well. Maybe another tree, fairly close to. We don't have to go straight up. These are organic things, so maybe it leans off to the side a little bit. This big sort of giant tree relative in this area. Again, maybe some more obvious branches poking off this one. And then just a series of sort of dashes and dots, as long as it's broken texture. Then your imagination kind of fills in the gaps, really. If it sort of glances over it and it's as you expect, then your mind sort of tells you the rest of it, really. 
So in terms of like the, the technique, it's quite, it's labor intensive in the, t in the sense that it takes a lot of dashes and a lot of individual marks, but you can see that the effect is achieved relatively quickly. So lots of individual marks, but that doesn't mean to say you have to t spend a lot of time on them. So yes, it does take a while and it's a lot of mark making, but I'm not being very particular about each individual dash. I'm not caring too much where each individual mark goes. I'm just keeping a general eye on it and judging it as I go. If it feels like I'm getting the balance of it wrong, then I will adjust it, but I'm allowing it to be a little bit more random, not too contrived. That's what I'm aiming at anyway. I might do another one. That's not that leaning, maybe like that. Again, thicken up the, the base of the trunk, it gets thinner as it goes up. Some branches coming off it. Perhaps it doesn't have as much growing on this one. It could have more empty branches, but just a, a few clusters of things growing off it, perhaps. I think variation is, is crucial in this kind of thing. If you did every single tree the same, it's not going to create the illusion of realism at all. I think it takes your imagination out of a scene. So maybe just a couple in this area. So maybe just a few bits that are sticking up from this area as well along here. We're seeing some of the tallest ones stick up, but there might just be a few little bits that arrive up into the picture as well. Okay, um, I'm going to go back through the layers a little bit and I'm going to just refine and polish up some of the, the details because I can certainly see bits that need a bit more. This is a relatively quick piece, I'm only doing this in about 45 minutes to an hour, so I'm just getting the effect. If this was a full painting, I would spend a bit longer in it, maybe a, a few more hours, heightening the realism and, and just really keep looking at it. I think the best way to get realism sometimes into a piece is to just keep looking at it and, and figuring out what's working, and if you can possibly work out why, then that always is useful for future paintings but it, certainly if you can look at an area and it doesn't seem to sit right then often you just have to try and analyze a piece and try and figure out what it is that isn't working and honestly that's, that's the best the best way of progressing in your work is to be willing to spend the time trying to nudge it in the direction of, of more realism or more accuracy depending what you're aiming for Sometimes it feels like I can spend as much time looking at a piece of work without actually making changes to it. Certainly in the past, when I was sort of learning a bit more early on, I spend a lot more time looking at it than you actually are making the marks themselves. But it's all an important part of the process. It's a stage you have to go through. But to be able to just really observe, to look at things, to analyze them, I think it's absolutely crucial, I, I believe. Okay, so with that dark color, I'm going to go into some of the distance sort of forms and, and just break it up slightly. Just give a few suggestions that there are some darker tones going off here as well. So there might be some trees that just stick out a bit more obviously in this region. Maybe just the trunks stick out a little bit more in the slightly more foreground versions. Just a suggestion here and there. Certainly in these sort of areas. If I go to the darker blue, you're gonna start seeing the trunks more. Okay, I'm going to go to the sky layer and I'm going to go back to my warmer colours now. Now, if you started with the flesh colour here and I'm going to go to a lighter colour and you can see it there perhaps. And I'm going to start introducing just some highlights into the sky. I think it's still quite dark up there and I think I need to bring in more lightness. In fact, one of the areas here, especially, I feel like it needs a bit more light underneath that horizon line. I think that the, the two tones are competing with each other. I think there should be definitely more lightness behind that first mountain range. So I'm just going to soften up the impact of that bank of cloud behind the horizon, lighten it up somewhat, then it won't compete with strength of tone with that mountain range. And 
that makes a bit more sense. And I'm also going to go to my warmer colours. I've got a range of different sort of fleshy colours or yellowy colours. I'm going to start introducing a bit more light into the scene, especially sort of near the top area. A bit more warmth. Again, I'm not being too precious about this. I just want to get some sort of bands of, of colour. And maybe I don't want to go over that area having said that. It's definitely going to be strongest near the very top, I think. Let's get some real strengthening of that light. I'm going to go to my yellowest sort of colour. So I'm just going to go back to the slightly purpley colours at this point, and I'm just going to introduce back into the, the sky some slightly darker tones, just the banks of clouds perhaps have some broken texture, some sort of darker streaks that go through a little bit. Again, I don't want it to compete with the first mountain range, so I need to be careful not to go that deep. I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit. I'm going to select that colour, perhaps just extend that up a little bit more. Okay, that'll do for the sky. I don't want to get too in-depth with that. I'm happy to keep it quite relatively simple for any bits that I feel just need a slight blending, smoothing in. In fact, I'm going to interestingly just bring in some slight variation of texture in there as well. Kind of, I like what it's done there in actual fact. I'm going to take that idea and just sort of drop in some variation here and there, just subtly, just to stop it looking too flat. And now I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on the front layers, just a little bit of refining, a little bit of fine tuning, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people that have supported me over on my Patreon page. If you want to learn more about that, there is a link down in the description. Please subscribe. Make sure that you click the little bell button next to the subscribe button and you'll definitely be notified about future videos like this. I do plenty more landscapes like this and I will do them in the future. So I've got playlists that you can look through now, but otherwise I shall catch you back here again next time. See you later.